Hello everybody, I'm uh, Boaz Feiler, I'm an evolutionary astrologer and I'm here with Angela Tiki, the OPA satellite for Greece and we're both sitting in Athens. Hi Angela. Hi Boaz, it's, it's fun so pleased yeah. to be with you here. Thank Hello you. everyone. And we're here to give you the astrological message for the week between the 30th of September to 7th of October 2017. So, Angela, on the 30th we have the opposition between Venus, Venus and, Neptune. and Neptune. So that's a, a dreamy uh, aspect, so this brings all the good aspects of our self within, but uh, it also makes us feel a little bit confused regarding relationships and uh, how we see things. So it's a bit tricky, but it would be very nice if we are um, trying to, to uh, relax a little bit or be close to the sea. It's going to be a very positive way of uh, this aspect. Now regarding relationship, it is better to wait until this uh, aspect passes because maybe you're not that objective and also to understand uh, how people see you or um, if they're telling the truth or things are exactly as you um, realize them. I totally agree. So as Angela said, the positive aspect could be that we have a lot of romance, that we have a lot of intuition, that we have a lot of feeling within our relationships, but the bad aspect is that we can be too naive. And it, as Angela said, it's not a good time to make decisions regarding your relationships because things can be a little and lazy. Money. And money. And money, of course. All the Venusian aspects. And if we are broadening the Venusian accent, uh, uh, aspects, then everything that connects with what satisfies you in life is Venusian. So regarding all these subjects, money, income, and relationships in love, and relationships wait the after the 30th. Up to that, just enjoy it. <laughs> yes, enjoy. And then Moon yeah. goes in Pisces. So, yeah. this is where we are going to understand it. What's Probably. happening later? Yeah, yeah. Ah, so yeah, on the third, we have the Moon conjunct Neptune in Pisces. We can all feel extra intuitive and very sensitive, artistic, creative, spiritual. It's not a very good time to do. Virgo related uh, no. uh, work like that requires a lot of mental effort or seeing a lot of details. Our left brain is not that good at that day. We can feel a little bit out of it. I like that. Your left brain. Yes. I love that. Because Neptune, thank you, Venus, <laughs> Neptune is the, the right brain. Of course. Yeah. So, yeah, left brain, right brain. On the fourth, we have a sensitive day. Yes, of course. It's uh, the moon conjunct Chiron. Chiron is the wounded healer. We can be in touch with our own pains and aches. And it's squaring Saturn. What does that tell you, Angela, that the moon is squaring Saturn at that okay, day? Okay, that is preparing us for the full moon that is coming next day. So, uh, if we let ourselves all these days be driven by our dreams or our aspirations simply because we want them to and not because it's not the reality then this is when we understand that we are getting hurt mm -hmm. that reality a healing it, also process. Yeah, it could be a healing process if we are connected to reality but if we're not reality could come knocking at our doors and show us that things are not the way we would like them to be or we are afraid they are it's about the soulness of things there's a uh, there's a concept in Japanese philosophy that is called the so-ness of things. Things are so, you know, yeah. they're not like we wish them to be, they're not like we're afraid they are, they're just the way they are and we have to deal with reality. So just don't be too critical on that thing. Full moon coming. Oh, full moon, and that's a little bit dramatic and hard full yeah. moon, so whatever we were dreaming last uh, the, during the past days, this yeah. is when reality comes in front of our face because we have this uh, uh, full moon in 12 Aries 12 of Aries and um, Sun conjunct Sun Mercury Mercury and also Pluto T square, Pluto T square. Yeah. that's huge that's huge that's huge because this might bring pain but it also can bring change and this willingness willingness sorry to change and Definitely. we want it to transform 
Definitely. In the same day, we have this uh, uh, Venus and Mars conjunction. conjunction, which starts a new cycle, yes. and it's going to be in square to a square. That's also a little bit hard. Yes. So it's very good for work because it's very good. It's very yeah. good for uh, putting an, or um, organizing things or putting it in order or being loyal to your program. But it's not that nice or feeling comfortable. Let's say. It's exhausting. It's exhausting for Venus. Yes. Because you have to sacrifice things. That's what it is. So Venus and Mars are in Virgo. They are conjunct. And they're squaring that Saturn. And again, that's reality hitting our face, saying that, you know, if, if we're talking about our needs and wants, uh, our cravings with, with Mars, and we're talking about Venus, our satisfaction, and Virgo is a lot of work. So, all work and no play. That could be. Uh, yes, and what do we say? This is Athena, the goddess Athena. Yes. Angela is amazing with mythologies. I don't know if you got to see her past presentations for Opa, but she always brings in from the world of mythology deeper themes that can connect to... So go ahead, yes, please. About Athena? Athena. Yes. yes, Athena is the goddess of strategy. Everybody loved her. She was the beloved one. Also, her name was given, of course, to Athens because she protected the, the, the city and the people uh, based on not imaginative things but in reality so you have to be like a soldier but also uh, be more mature maturing is, she was a warrior goddess but not like like mars aries yeah aries it was, was immature Ah, she was mature. She was mature in the favor. Well, women are always more mature than men. That's the thing. Like, yeah, this is the ultimate yes. for Athena. So let's say that this aspect is like Athena, being with a strategic, strategic, being very loyal to our uh, causes, and being able to separate what we need and we, what we don't need. It. Even if we have to sacrifice what. Uh, we are used to, let's say, more. Very good. And the, 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 the Sun conjunct Mercury at the time says that there's a lot of new information coming in. There's a, it's a time for learning. It's a time for huge mental processing and really understanding how we need to navigate our life forward. The square or T square to Pluto is transformative. And if we're not calibrating ourselves with reality, we can create havoc in our life. We can have a lot of turbulence. Yes. Instability comes, internal instability comes if you allow to your life and relations in continue with uh, people or situations that are not good for you, yes. for your inner balance. It's Libra. Yes. So, and uh, Venus is in mutual uh, reception, reception with Mercury. Yeah, so they have to communicate hard with logic. Very nice, very nice. Yes. So, Venus is in mutual reception with Mercury. And the thing with Pluto is that it makes us understand things deeper. It's we, we can see things that are no longer authentic to us in our life. And of course, every new, every full moon in Aries is a culmination of our initiatives, of things we have worked towards and and and, and action that has been taking place. It's 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 a it's a peak time. And at this time, we can see what needs to be changed and how we need to upgrade ourselves and evolve. We are halfway. Eh? We are halfway. What has started in uh, the spring equinox? Yes. Now we are in halfway and see what we have done. In order to continue and complete, we have to take out of our life whatever we don't need. Exactly. We have to become more efficient. Yes. And this also is like um, showing us what's going to happen when Jupiter in Scorpio is going to enter uh, on October 10th. On October 10th. We stick here. For about a year, yeah. We stop here with uh, Jupiter entering Scorpio, which is a fascinating subject by its own. And it's the primary subject for the next OPA retreat, which is happening in October. 
in Zion Park in the United States, Angela will be presenting about uh, bringing light through darkness, understanding, because you uh, cannot say that I only want light. Of course, darkness is very important. It's like the day and the night. We need both of them. So how can you understand the light if you don't have darkness? If you understand... And when you understand the darkness, you are illuminating yourself. Definitely. That's yeah. it. That's and that's it. one of the main themes of Jupiter in Scorpio. So we will leave you with that. We hope you enjoyed it. Angela, thank you for taking thank part. Thank you very much. Studio. Thank you very much. It's been fun. And and we're going to continue and enjoy ourselves here, and I hope you are too. Until next week, goodbye. Bye bye. Perfect, 10 minutes exactly.